hey guys welcome back again to another video you're not expecting were you expecting this so guys in today's video we'll be talking about travel insurance this travel insurance will cover for any country you can think about Schengen country european country normal asian african any of the country so it's just travel insurance in general and this travel insurance video will cover for tourists for students for work for family for any routes we won't take pass as long as say now travel insurance then some people might want to ask what's the difference between travel insurance and health insurance um okay what is insurance gonna go if people do business study in school you know that insurance is a way of you let me just use like a layman's language like maybe when you buy something and then you do not trust the thing it's not as if you do not trust this thing no, but just in case the thing uh, maybe is liable to hey scrap that scrap that insurance is a way of you um, let me explain another one let's say for example hmm, you bought this earring for maybe so so amount of money right and then the last thing is you now want to insure it you insuring it is a way of you pay a particular amount like it's usually they'll just tell you when you get to the insurance company they'll tell you the value of this earring as me is a good earring they'll tell you the value but then you now pay like a few percent of it every month or every year depending on any payment plan so that means if anything happens to this earring like if it gets lost fire accident or somebody stole it eh you go back to the insurance company they'll buy you another one pa, 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 pa. but then some insurance companies they used to have um, exception of insurance some people can say and before they will give you this new earring they'll first investigate and see whether you were the one that kept it or you stole it some insurance company will be like they will not they are not liable for carelessness mm -hmm. some are just natural occurrences for example if flood flood your house now and the earring you now lost the earring they will give you another one i hope you understand that same way if you buy your car a hey, car in case anything happens you may be god stolen you can't find it and everything so they will investigate and see B is not your fault and there are some that will cover for orange right, insurance they do not see maybe true true you lost the car if it's true true do not give you the full car back because you've insured it and the funny thing is most times things we insure they don't used to get lost that's just it most times when you pay for insurance just know that that's nothing will happen to it just, just know. i don't know those insurance companies they used to have one wizard one wish most insurance this thing even when you insure your life or anything you just realize that you just live longer those insurance companies i think they are courtesy they used to they have one juju or kaya mata that they used to use you just see that you are paying them every month even when you pay for health insurance you see that you never get sick they're just paying it but then it's always good because if you don't pay it, you get sick so it's a way of you just preventing it so it's always good to have insurance so now why do embassies or uh, embassies actually request for travel insurance now that you've understand the basis of insurance and why we should actually insure our items and every other so the reason they actually request for travel insurance some companies is for some countries is compulsory whereas for some oh she will go through microphone see so that we can know that you are zooming very well put microphone the man cannot hear me i should open this video so you can hear me it's when somebody is doing video you'll be doing vroom 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 if <sighs> don't mind these people jerry can you guys hear me so some embassies is actually compulsory you actually do travel insurance why some is not compulsory but then normally naturally it's actually good to do travel insurance but i know that most of you watching me are africans and i not going insure and that's why the embassy made it compulsory and so now what's the essence of that travel insurance because i talked about property the essence of that travel insurance is for example maybe while traveling or when you are traveling i share that course of duration of travel something bad actually like happened to you like sudden or often seen sickness illness or anything maybe when you go to the airport that to take you out some medical condition and everything but mind you travel insurance does not cover for pre-existing medical condition and that's one thing you should know because for example let's say you have as uh, ss you are sickle cell anemia or you actually are asthmatic you know that people with sickle cell anemia asthmatic patient they actually kind of have problem with when they are going on high altitude they kind of need 
um, extra special condition. So just imagine if you actually buy your travel insurance and you do not declare your pre-medical condition and then maybe because you just fly normally and because of the high altitude it affected your health and you find yourself in the hospital in a nearby hospital in the in the airport yeah my dear you can't pay your full money because insurance is not covered for that one so before you buy your travel insurance make sure you actually declare your pre-existing condition so they will know which one to cover for you and which one of not to cover for your ending so majorly the travel insurance does not cover for pre existing condition but if you have one make sure to actually declare but sometimes people try to hide it and then when they actually have crisis during the time of travel you just see that the insurance company will come and tell you that and see and cool. so you understand this so that's the sense of the travel insurance in case anything up to you so in case somebody might want to ask what is the difference between health insurance and travel insurance like i've explained they basically mean the same thing it's just the um english that is different so when you actually go to um an insurance company that you want to buy travel insurance you as well buy health insurance because it's travel insurance to cover for health is to cover for safety to cover for so many things like that so whether health insurance whether travel insurance is the same thing that you actually buy i hope i've answered that question then which other question do people want to ask okay now like i said this video will cover for different route study work this one and everything so now how much study insurance so as a study insurance, how much insurance are you supposed to buy? Let me jump on that first. The type of insurance you should buy or the duration of insurance you should buy actually depends on the route you'll be going through, the country and the duration of time. Let's say for example, if you're going on a tourist visa, your travel insurance is supposed to cover for the duration of your travel tourism it, and you know like i explained that the travel insurance is just like for unforeseen sickness and sudden illness you know all those this thing so it will cover for even when you land in the company in the country sorry and even during your stay we all know that um aside africa other countries it is compulsory that they have insurance health insurance it is very mandatory for everybody to have health insurance any country you're going to it is mandatory for them to have health insurance so when you're coming from a new country you probably of course you don't have your health insurance so that's why they feel like your travel insurance to cover for your duration of stay till when you have your maybe permanent residency and everything then you can become you can start doing normal insurance like normal citizens of that country i hope you understand so any country you're going all of them all those citizens they have their own travel insurance they have their own health insurance normal normal so you that you are coming to miss then you have to collect travel insurance and that travel insurance will cover from the duration of when you take up from your own country to when you land in that new country and your duration of stay probably to when you go back i hope you understand that is to cover for all the duration so let's say you're going on a tourist visa maybe you're going for two weeks of course your travel insurance has to be two weeks if you're going for one month your travel insurance has to be one month if you're going for six months your travel insurance has to be six months so for students if you're going for a two-year course your study insurance has to be covered for two years the full duration but then some countries will just allow you to buy one year then next day you you cover but some it has to cover for the whole duration so if you're going for a four-year course your travel insurance has to cover for your four-year course and that's why for uk they talk about i i i h s social so their own health insurance is that i h l social so that's how you notice that if you're going for a one year master's you buy just one year insurance if you're going for four year degree you buy you pay for four year health insurance so uk that's on ihs surcharge whereas for other country they call it as normal normal travel insurance i hope you understand that so any duration that you'll be spending there you buy it. so let's say if, if you're going on a work visa depending like for uk now if you're going through the healthcare route you don't have insurance um you don't pay for I I I H L such as it's actually free but I don't really know about other countries where well, depending on the country so for example if you actually take job seeker visa in your own country and you want to travel to go look for job so that job that um, job seeker visa is valid for six months there are so many countries that offer that i have a lot of video on that i've talked about germany netherlands france and this is the offer job that six month visa that you can use to look for job sure you understand so in that view you buy just travel insurance of six months because that's the validity of your visa then when you actually get the job that's when you now start 
not my health insurance and then in that view if you actually get a job for example in germany you are your employer you will split your health insurance their health insurance percentage in germany is 14.6 is it 14.6 or 14.7 so you, you pay 7.5 percent your employer will pay 7.5 percent so you guys will share it. but for that duration of time that you are just moving new linear that you've not gotten the job here you have to pay from your pocket then another scenario as you got the job before you left your own country that one too will happen so your employer will actually do insurance for you depending on the country like i know of germany that the employer and the employee they share the insurance together so the employer will pay 7.5 percent for you 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 pay 7.5 percent everything making 14 percent but just in case or anything if you get a job and the employer depending on that's why i want to try, i want to try and talk for every other country just in case it's a country that the employer does not pay for travel insurance right if you get a job the only insurance you do is just for one month um insurance or if depending on for example if they give you some countries you know uk now if they give you a job you can get a job contract for two years and that's it or three years then you extend it some for example maybe like in germany again let me use germany again or some countries like they say that they have probation period of six months after that six months nobody can fire you so countries like germany it can be kind of difficult to, for you to really get a one-year contract like that they might want to test and see maybe a good person and everything but then you can still get one year so if you are getting a job in your own country like you're in your own country and then you got a job from outside your own country so depending on the number of years of contract that they give you if they say um, one year work contract then you extend it all two years so you buy your insurance to cover for that whole two years i hope you understand that and then even in that view of um discussing your employment you discuss the insurance this thing with your employer most times most insurance is to share it with the employee but like i said depending on the company depending on the country as well depending on so many factors i hope you understand that but then i've just tried to give you like a broad knowledge uh -huh. so anyone you find yourself i'm sure i'll be able to answer people's questions so if you're going on a student visa or this thing the number of duration of anywhere you're going that's the amount of this thing that you buy now people might want to ask so how much is actually this tourist visa right um, sorry the travel insurance depending on so many countries and for a fact i'll just say everybody should use travel insurance of um 30, euros per year for this 30,000 euros per year is mostly common with um schengen countries schengen country or this european country you just say they will tell you to buy 30,000 um 30,000 euros um travel insurance 10,000 euros travel and then you'll be like are you going to pay 30,000 no what they mean is like when i made the example of this earring like when you buy this earring i want to insure it like the example i made earlier you're just going to pay a fraction of percent of it depending on the company let's say i bought this um this earring for one thousand naira, right when i get to the insurance company i want to i want to insure this this um what's it called this earring then they will tell me that how much did i buy it and they will wait so they can just be like i'll be paying one percent of this earring money every month or every year depending on the insurance company depending on this thing. so for insurance you are not paying the exact value of what you bought but at the long run you see that you are even paying more than so they will just put you on a payment plan maybe for one year or this thing is worth thirty thousand and eh, one thousand naira but every month oh, come and be paying 100 naira every month so let's say in the in the sixth month that's when this earring got lost i'll go and meet the insurance company if i can't find my earring go but then they will still give me another earring of 1000 naira. that one is their own loss i hope you understand that so sometimes they will try to wait and see the one that will pay them and see the flexibility and how volatile the product is if it's all this product that is to all this product that is to um that is very very susceptible to damage and uh -huh, they will charge you high because they know that you will come back soon where is something that is to stay long depending on the insurance company i'm just using it to explain so now how much are you supposed to buy for travel insurance like i said use thirty thousand worth of insurance this thing so in that way when i made my ex when i explained this earring so that means how much is thirty thousand euros worth of insurance 
10,000 euros watch up is just like the 1% of 30,000 euros. Is it 1%? Yeah, the 1% of 30,000 euros, like I told you. So, in that view, in Charlie Man's language, in Nigeria, if you had to buy travel insurance, in Nigeria, generally, because the company I'm talking about, they are international company, right? In Nigeria, generally, 1% of 30,000 euros is 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 30 euros a year depending on the company you can pay more you can pay less depending on the company right and that's like is it, is it one percent or ten percent i don't know that's like depending on the company but when they tell you aside okay let me just make this video like i don't know when you'll be watching it the embassy can say buy insurance what Forty thousand euros. Buy insurance worth twenty thousand pounds. Buy insurance worth twenty thousand euros. When you see anything like that, they are not telling you to pay twenty thousand euros or that particular amount. What they are telling you is that the insurance should be like. I would take explain this thing now. Just like I've used this earring to explain. So when an embassy say buy insurance of thirty thousand euros, let's say this is the what this is the thirty thousand euros what the embassy is telling you is that you should go and insure your travel what thirty thousand euros so now you now carry the travel and go to the um insurance company that uh, this is my travel i want to insure you though and then they'll not tell you okay for this this is your travel that what's thirty thousand euros so we'll not charge you thirty um ten percent of it per year or twenty percent of it by your thirty percent, depending on the company. I hope you understand that. But majorly, the cheapest I've seen is like one percent of that thirty thousand. So that's why I say, depending on the company you're buying from, and I will recommend some company, international company, that you actually buy from, that is cheap. So now let's say we are everybody's company, country asks for thirty thousand euros travel insurance, right? So you now went to a company that you need insurance to buy for this one. So the amount they will charge you is. What's thirty thousand percent? I'm not good with math because this thing is confusing my head. Thirty thousand times ten. Thirty thousand times ten divided by hundred. Two hundred euros. It can be two hundred euros. So that is one percent. That's one percent of thirty euros. So if you are to insure, get an insurance of. 30,000 euros, then you're looking at between 30 euros to 70 euros, depending on the per year or per year, depending on the company. So, I'll be recommending two companies that I know of, and it's not just to buy insurance, that's another mistake that people used to make when they tell you buy insurance, travel insurance, and everything. Especially when you're using it for visa application, don't just go to any company you see because it's cheap and buy it, they will be one direct partner. So make sure to try and buy a an internationally known travel insurance. Like I told you, like I've explained earlier, the essence of that travel insurance. Imagine when you're buying a local insurance, and then maybe you go to Germany or you go to any country, and then you got sick, and they look at your, your insurance, they don't understand. And so it is not all companies, insurance companies you can buy from. Some are just local insurance companies that maybe when you are sick in your own country. So make sure to go for international travel insurance insurance company so that even if anything happens to you in this whole wide world, it ranks. They can do transfer and everything. Don't go to others uh, plots to be um, Ikeja Road travel this thing. So that's why I'm recommending two companies, which is Ico and Alliance. It is not limited to, I think they have Azar and everything, but I know of ICO and Alliance. And I, I feel like most embassies, this is what they use. When you buy your insurance, and that's ICO or Alliance, when you submit it, nobody will come and doubt you and say, who is this company? Why are you coming for anything? Nobody. You will get your visa straight away. But if you are buying something else, so even before you buy this ICO and um, Alliance, make sure to contact your embassy and ask them that which insurance that they use every every company i'm sorry every country has insurance company that they use but majorly 98 percent every every embassy knows alliance and ico alliance is a german company so it's an international company alliance originated from germany and i think ico ico is from uk or us or this is so they are international companies 
they are worldwide known but then still has but 98 percent of time when you buy ico or alliance you don't have any issue with it and when you want to buy and somehow which one is actually cheaper i feel like i can't remember either ico just call them and ask because either i can't really remember again ico or alliance they can give you two years for two years uh, travel insurance for 30 euros two years insurance for 30 euros why the other one two years you have to pay 70 euros so either of those two companies just call them and ask but i know that one of them used to give two years for um 30 euros is very very cheap i hope you understand that so i can't i can't remember which of it shall call them and ask and again depending on the route depending on where you're going to depending on so many factors but i know that one of them is cheaper we give you two years and another thing about insurance is the longer your buy like if you buy for if you buy a one week insurance it's very, very expensive if you buy two weeks it's very expensive so when you buy a long duration with one year two years three years the longer period you buy the more discounted it is so just try to buy um a longer year instead of that's people going for toys because sometimes people going for toys when you see how much they buy their insurance for one week or two weeks you'll be here ten thousand five thousand ten thousand whatever as people that is going for two uh, two years they can spend thirty thousand so can you see so sometimes it's better to buy a longer duration it's always cheaper compared to when you buy for short distance duration anyways i hope with this few point of mind i've been able to educate somebody enlighten somebody on the type of insurance they should buy so if you have any question or any doubt make sure to leave it in the comment section and if you are buying insurance this amount is just per person you know, a person it is not this but then the insurance company can have um family combo they can have family combo but this price is just per person mm -hmm. so when you get there if you want to buy for all your family members tell them that this thing but, but i doubt it is always per each applicant there is another question to somebody might want to ask and this thing so it is not countries that actually request for it like i told you uk one down is ihs surcharge so depending on the country you're going to depending on the requirement but and then depending on regardless of any value you just see travel insurance of so so so, so amount just carry the amount go to your um any of this insurance company i mentioned just tell them that you want a travel insurance what this value and then they'll just give you and then you submit it and that's it very simple nothing chemical so guys this will bring us to the end of today's video and Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.